Hello, um, today I'm going to talk about symmetry and the reason that I'm going to talk about symmetry is of course to motivate Noether's theorem. So let's just write symmetry, symmetry, okay and so first we need to define what we mean by symmetry in physics and by symmetry I mean that under some sort of transformation the Lagrangian of the system or is unchanged and so you might think of this as uh, as sort of if the Lagrangian is invariant, if the phenomenon doesn't depend, the description of the phenomenon doesn't depend on where we are under some sort of transformation. So if I have something uh, A and I transform it over to some sort of B, if the Lagrangian is unchanged, then I, I'm uh, going to say that it is symmetric under that transformation or invariant so to speak. And so uh, an example of this, of course, is let's say we have two points in space-time um, that could be uh, that could be um, like 1000 BC and uh, today 2015 and of course at position so Greece and uh, Copenhagen. Then if we were to look at some phenomenon described by Lagrangian and that is that it is unchanged uh, under this transformation, then we say that this Lagrangian w will be uh, symmetric uh, under space-time translations. And so, uh, let's say the Lagrangian has the form, uh, and this Lagrangian exhibits this symmetry. What does this mean? Well, uh, for this particular Lagrangian, we can write the, Lagr all the Lagrange equations as uh, dl by dx mu equals uh, the time derivative of dl by dx mu dot. And so because it is invariant under transformation between these two points and these two points are um, arbitrary, uh, meaning that it doesn't matter how I choose it. We said 1000 BC Greece and 2015 Copenhagen. We could have said today, yesterday. We could have said today China, yesterday the United States. Um, it wouldn't matter, the Lagrangian would be symmetric, it would be invariant, then this over here must vanish. It cannot exist, it must be zero at all times. And so, uh, what, because if it wasn't, wasn't then uh, the Lagrangian would change uh, as we changed uh, the position in space-time, and thus it would not exhibit the required symmetry. And so what we're left with is that the time derivative, so that we are left with the here, right hand side being equal to zero. And so now we identify this as the form momentum of the particle and because we have to take the time derivative of it we get the momentum dot equals zero. And uh, integrating this on both sides we get that p mu is equal to some uh, constant vector. And what does it mean? Well, uh, the form momentum is defined as, so for, for the given form momentum state, we have some energy EP and we have the regular momentum in three dimensional space, the one that we're used to from uh, mechanics and stuff. And this states that if the Lagrangian is invariant as we change, oh, is invariant as we change uh, the position in space time, then these two, this and this, must be conserved. They cannot change in time. And so what we have from this is uh, the conservation of energy and the conservation of momentum. So what we saw, basically what we saw is that because there was a transformation, space-time translation, under which the Lagrangian was invariant, and this time because the space-time translation, this was the case, then we have a conservation law. And one might ask oneself, we've, we've only shown it for, um, for space-time translations, but the natural question that one asks oneself is, is this true for every symmetry? And it turns out that it is. So if we had taken, uh, let's say, uh, rotation, so we could just three-dimensional rotation, so a, a uh, rotationally uh, symmetric or invariant system, then the conservation of angular momentum would have come out sort of in the bottom here. 
and there are many types of symmetries and uh, of course this is a very powerful tool because it allows you to identify uh, conserved charges or quantities they are called charges in the sort of language of another theorem uh, but we need a toolkit to sort of do this and that is what another theorem is another theorem takes this idea and from this uh, you get a toolkit so you get a set of steps that you need to perform and then if you input so you see uh, you have the, the in another theorem and I input a symmetry and uh, the Lagrangian we'll see that we need the Lagrangian in most cases then I will get a conserved charge so if I put in these two and I crank sort of around or roll around in the toolkit just um, working through the map I get the conserved charge out so this the another theorem is a very strong tool when you need to identify these conserved charges but it is a tool it is simply a tool to do this efficiently and systematically this was okay this was not the hardest one because this vanished and so, but some of the symmetries can be uh, rather hard. It could be rather hard to derive the conserved charges, and that's why uh, we have another theorem. Uh, but we're going to see that next time, and I'll show you an example after we derive it. Um, so until then, um, just think about this, and just this is an amazing idea, and just think about how powerful it is. So, bye.